Howdy everyone, I'm Spud, this is Potato Whiskers, and welcome back to Timmy Time. After a long time and a lot more decks built, I return with today's episode about my very first. Back when I started playing, I did what I always do when I play games. I shot straight for aesthetic over optimal play, and I was dead set on Night Tribal and nothing else. I had one specific commander in mind too, Rafik of the Many, today's commander. But let's get to where the deck finally ended up, starting with our main strategy. A combination of two cards has won me more games than anything else. Our commander, Rafik of the Many, and Steel of the Godhead as an enchantment. These cards, combined with the support of the Exalted Mechanic and my Timmy Top 3, have made this deck a target at the table. Speaking of my Timmy Top 3, here they are. Coming in at number 3 is Noble Hierarch, not only providing perfect color fixing, but an Exalted stack to boot, all for the low, low cost of one mana. At number two, we have Ranger of Eos, a perfect tutor for our low to the ground creatures to provide our field with needed support. And number one is an obvious pick for an exalted deck. Sublime Archangel is a creature with exalted that gives other creatures an extra stack of exalted that triggers separately if the creature already has exalted. There are three pillars of our exalted strategy. The foot soldiers, which make up the bulk of our army, our boons of justice, such as enchantments and artifacts, and the truly exalted, the top class of our exalted fighters. The Foot Soldiers consist of pretty much every feasible Exalted card within Bant's colors. A couple standouts in this section are Quisali Pride Mage, allowing strategic removal of problematic enemy enchantments and artifacts, and Frontline Sage, allowing us to loot through our deck, replacing dead cards in our hand later in the game. Our Boons of Justice consist of six cards that provide effective game-altering strategies. Angelic Benediction allows us to ensure an opponent's most valuable blocker is unavailable for duty. Sigil of Valor provides our strongest creature with support from each other creature we control. Finest Hour can provide an opportunity to finish multiple opponents. Ardent Plea can cascade us into the lower tier of our foot soldiers to bolster our battlefield. And finally, Angelic Exaltation provides an enchanting alternative to our Sigil. The truly exalted are key pieces to making our strategy effective. Silent Arbiter keeps combat to an honorable one-on-one. -on -one. Battlegrace Angel keeps us sustained, allowing us to worry less about damage. Guiltspire Avenger acts as a deterrent for attacks as long as he remains untapped. Stoic Angel prevents any opponents with a go-wide strategy from doing just that. And lastly and most importantly, Sovereigns of Lost Alara can tutor out our ace in the hole. Moving along to the unexalted among our command, Jinara Asura of War is a good evasive fighter that can grow if we have mana to spare. Notvine Paladin is a deceptive creature, cheap but with power that grows with our board doubly so with Exalted. Bant Battle Mage is another good option for giving creatures the ability to get damage through. Knight of New Alara provides a nice buff to our multicolored swingers. Sunscape Familiar is our castle ramper, providing more efficient use of our mana for green and blue spells. Bant Shoreblade is my low-to-the-ground flavor pick. Rock's Warmonk provides another possible heavy hitter with added bonus sustain. Angel's Herald gives us easier access to one of our most useful creatures, Empirical Archangel. And we're also packing a one-man army in the form of Mere Sigil Sergeant, using any of our blue permanents to create feasible go-wide options. Lastly, Galea Kindler of Hope gets us some nice premonition and surprise aura access for Steel of the Godhead or any of our other buffs like Curiosity, Angelic Destiny, or Shield of the Righteous. Just in case, though, we also pack open the armory for that very purpose. A pillar of any good strategy is how you deal with large-scale threats either in the moment or by attrition. Some of our in-the-moment solutions are Teferi's Protection, Bant Charm, Angel Song, Time Wipe, Hindering Light, Offerings to Asha, and finally Airy Mystic. Each of these provides a different solution for our permanents being targeted or destroyed and allows us more flexibility going forward. Not to mention some of that delicious flavor. Some more long-term solutions come into play when some more of our star players come out onto the battlefield. Starting with Hana, Ship's Navigator, to bring back any and all artifacts and enchantments we might need. Grand Abolisher keeps everything quiet on our turn, and Grand Arbiter Augustine IV works to further discourage opposition. Lastly, we have our lovely Lockout Ladies. Sigarda, Host of Herons, prevents Forced Sacrifice on our field, while Avacyn Angel of Hope gives all our permanents indestructible. And if Empirical Archangel also happens to be on the battlefield, then the only thing that can break through is Exile or Tucking Effects. Personally, I use the flavorful Wargate to tutor out whichever angel is most useful at the time. And one last way we can deny our opponents is Elspeth Knight Errant. With her ultimate ability, all our permanents get indestructible from an emblem, which are notoriously hard to remove. Last, as always, is the March of the Lands. Some standouts as they line up are Cathedral of War, Teleria West, Rogue's Passage, and Alchemist's Refuge. I've personally been more lax about my lands in most of my newer decks, running more basics than anything else, but that might just be because I'm too cheap to buy good lands and too lazy to make proxies. 
Thank you so much for watching this episode of Timmy Time. Chat with me in the comments below. Give me some constructive criticism or some deconstructive criticism, whichever you choose. Or take a closer look at the deck list via the link in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next one.